Tiny Tarot, hey, hey, what have you got to say today? I am Loki Magical, aka Christina Smart. Sometimes I flip that around, who cares? Online, Loki Magical with a K is where you find me on Facebook. And this is the Tiny Tarot Podcast, where we consult this tiny little sassy tarot deck and ask those pertinent questions that we're all asking. And guess what? This is podcast number 13. And hey, Earl, how are you doing? Earl, the podcast master, is also here. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. There he is on this uh, number 13, lucky number 13. So, of course, we are going to talk about luck on number 13. Tiny Tarot's like, haha, you thought. And, of course, before we even got this rolling, we had some issues. We had technical issues. We had equipment issues. We had and kept laughing about, well, of course, this is number 13. It's going to be about luck. So, already, Tiny Tarot is like, let's get your mindset straight. <laughs> Sometimes things just just don't go the way that you want them to go. So real quick, I want to get a couple of things out of the way. First of all, Earl, the podcast master, is here with Toy Robot Productions, and he does such a fantastic job. You can also find us not just here, but uh, here on YouTube, but you can also find us on Spotify, uh, on Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, and sometimes TikTok, if you're lucky. I don't always get on the TikTok, but occasionally I do. So look us up there. And then I also want to say, remember, guys, this is a tarot read. This is not a substitute for therapy. This is more of like a good conversation with a friend that knows you really well, and especially with Sassy Tarot, isn't afraid to say the stuff that nobody else really wants to say. That's one of the things I love about Tiny Tarot. And also remember that, especially if you're watching on YouTube, we've got information in there if you would like to donate to our channel. We appreciate all the donations. It keeps us going. So thank you for being here and listening. Like, share, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, business is out of the way. Let's get to it. Tiny Tarot says that, you know, luck. This is number 13. Why do we even think that the number 13 is an unlucky number? I'm sure there's something on Wikipedia about that. But we just get ideas about what we decide is lucky and unlucky. And a lot of it has to do with what, what we've experienced in our past. Maybe some of you have some lucky charms or a certain jersey that you want to wear when, you're, when your team is playing or something that you, man, the last time that I wore this jewelry, uh, I found $20. So I assume that this jewelry is really lucky for me. What is that? Why do we get into that? Why do we decide something's good or bad? Earl, do you have anything that you think is like, this is my lucky shirt or this is a lucky charm that I wear? I can't put a hat on a bed. Okay. You don't put a hat on a bed. That mm -mm. feels like an old lady's type of superstition. Did you learn That's, that from well, somebody? I, I just recently kind of figured out where I came. When I was a little kid, um, I, I saw this movie with John Wayne, I think. And he throws his hat on this on this bed. He's he's in this bedroom with this woman, and she freaks out that he he's done this. And uh, he's like, "What? You don't? It's if you put a, it's bad luck to put a hat on a bed." And mm. so he keeps throwing his hat on the bed deliberately. Oh, to just it. to make her mad. Just so to make now her he's mad. messing yeah. with her. Okay. And <laughs> I think that stuck when I was itty itty bitty. I don't throw the hat on the bed. It makes her mad. Well, or it's unlucky. I don't know yeah. where that would come from. Maybe yes. that's if your husband comes in and sees a hat on the bed and it's not his. Maybe he's upset back then. Oh, know. you know wow. what I mean? Okay. Like maybe that wow. you don't ever leave a hat. That, that's just so tiny tarot. That felt like a tiny tarot message. She was like, okay, so here's the deal. A subtle here's the deal. You don't leave a hat on a storyline through yeah. a, a three-year-old. Whose hat is that? That's right. I just heard it was bad luck. Yeah. Well, so. whose hat is that? Who's been here? I work hard all day. <laughs> you come in here well yeah that would make sense that's to me. not my hat <laughs> well tiny tarot hey hey what have you got to say about luck so on that now that we are in the perfect vibration for luck and superstition and all of those things that we tie in with the number 13 uh, i have divided this stack into three equal piles and earl would you intuitively pick pile one two or three for the message today two two all right, we're going with two. Thank you, Tiny Tarot. What do you got to say today about luck? And the very first card that comes, I love it when I, I want to, I almost want to predict what card that comes out. Oh, well, it's a celebration, of course. That's what happens when we feel like luck is going in our favor. It seems like everybody around us is also celebrating. It's not just that feeling of things are lucky for me. Like it, and luck feels that way too. Luck feels like things are on your side. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tiny Tarot. Luck feels like 
things are on your side, like, like the energies around you that you don't understand, that you don't have control over, have suddenly shifted to work in your favor in a moment. It's like, yay, all of that stuff that I normally push against is suddenly going, woo, hey, we want you to be successful too. So it feels like that toast of everyone going together when luck falls in your favor. If you're, okay, now I hate to admit this, but I like to play, I like to play casino games. I love it when things line up. I love it when it gives me that little amygdala boost in the back of my head when I see those little coin jingles and things. And that's kind of, again, that moment of luck when those things line up that's I think that's the whole reason it it it's a chance it's a game of chance it looks like right even though it's it's a very contained box and then but occasionally when things line up bing 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 you get a little reward it feels that way in your life when you're going along and maybe you've been pushing against something that's felt hard and suddenly those misty little things that you couldn't really define suddenly start to fall into place like puzzle pieces. You get the same little amygdala boost, bing, when you see that happening just like you do when the things line up on the casino slots. And that's part of what Tiny Tarot is saying here. You like that feeling. Lucky feels good good. That's why you pursue it. That's why you notice it. And and you tend to put a name on it because it feels like something that you don't have any control over. Ooh, I kind of like that because really what, what are, what are we deeming as luck or lucky when someone's lucky, they have a lot of really good stuff happening to them. And it, it seems from the outside that their effort is being assisted. And that's a lot of what this, this card is. It's not just one person alone. It's somebody being assisted. Well, hey, Tiny Tarot, how do I get more of that feeling of I'm being assisted in my life? Well, okay, this was this actually kind of came out upside down. So I want to look at that. This is a seven of swords. And the seven of swords is one of those something that's going on behind your back something that you don't know about. Uh, I always say like that employee that really wants to get a different job. So quietly behind the scenes, he's putting together his resume. He's not saying anything about it, but he's putting together his resume and he's starting to have some interviews like right on the down low so that eventually he can slide out. So what are we saying? And then this was kind of upside down. So this was saying be more obvious about it. There's things that have to do, oh, and these swords are all about your thought process too. So ooh, luck has a lot to do with how we define it. Mm. What may be lucky for one person or per be perceived as lucky for one person may not be perceived as lucky for another. So that's first. We kind of define in our lives where those lucky moments are. And then, oh, thank you. We build our beliefs on that based on that past experience. And sometimes it's our personal past experience. And sometimes it's I viewed I saw this other, it's kind of like a comparison sort of thing. I, I met someone that was very lucky who told me A, B, C. And from that point on, I always felt this way about it. And now this is how I come to life. And Because you, you've met those people. that, And I have been that kind of person. I think it was very annoying for the, for the people around me. Is that I would, I would be filling out a raffle ticket saying, uh, I'm going to win this when you draw it. So this is how you pronounce my name. Like I would do things like that. Or I would put a little star in the corner and go, you'll know, you'll know when you pull this out that uh, it was me. It was me. And then when I come up and when I get the prize, you'll be like, uh. and, and you don't know how many times I won doing that. And they would go, oh my God, it was you. And it got a little annoying where it was like, maybe if we're going to do the raffle, we're not going to let this lady come in anymore and that's it so having that belief having that belief already in place is a lot of what influences what we think are these mysterious energies that we don't really have any control over so all right so here's what this is saying and it was interesting that it came out upside down because I want to address that is that the stuff that we think has been helping us that's actually mysterious and something that we can't see is a lot to do with the way that we 
think and that structure that we put in place to start with. That's going to change the filter of how you see yourself as either lucky or unlucky, much more than the physical, actual lucky things that are happening to you. Wow. That sounds like a weird message. I want to take that apart for a second. It's more about your luck structure. Hey, what does your luck structure look like than, than what's actually happening to you? It's more about how you're perceiving these things than how it's actually going. Like if you took the numbers apart, you'd probably be surprised that things are either pretty, pretty 50, 50, but your filter is in place to make it seem more like if, if you're in a more satisfied place, you're seeing yourself as more lucky. If you're in a very dissatisfied place, you look at back at your life and you start to see it as very unlucky. Do you see what I'm saying there? It, it's the same data. It's the same stuff that happened to you, but it has to do with what's going on up here. And sometimes that is behind the scenes. Sometimes it's not. Okay. So this is saying, take what maybe has been going on back here that you haven't looked at what's been going on as like safety mechanisms that are like okay your conscious doesn't need to know about this this is a subconscious acting here and i know that you've always seen yourself this way so we're just going to keep on doing that no need to see what's going on behind the scenes and when you look at the seven of swords it is kind of like that no need to see what's going on behind the scenes here i'm just taking these swords and i'm leaving that's exactly what he's doing so <clears throat> understand this part of luck that you have felt was maybe sort of a mysterious force that was affecting you in one way or another has a lot to do with what's going on in the background of your own mind. Okay. And also in the moment, in the moment that you are doing the reflection, where are you? Where are you vibrating? Are you vibrating with I'm high and I'm satisfied? Then that that I'm looking back on is going to look much luckier to me than I feel like crap about my life right now. And I've always felt like crap about my life. I've always been unlucky. Do you see where I'm going with that? That is not the message that I expected to get right out of the gate. But okay, Tiny Tara, once again, taking it. Oh, and hey, well, there's strength. All right, let's see how strength ties into this. Because strength is about... Uh, being brave enough to take a look at the stuff that you don't really want to look at. Are we going that way again? <laughs> Yeah, strength really is. It's not about, oh, man, I just got to gird up my loins. If you want to improve your luck, here's what you do. You just work harder. You just get up earlier. You just do more. Like, it, this is less about the physical. Like, I, I love charms, and I love working with energy to move things in my favor. Absolutely. But it's a lot of internal work, too. The outward physical work that I do with building altars or building charms is just for me a way to physically express and help me resonate more fully in here with what I'm trying to create. It's not, in, in my case, it's not that I think that the altar is necessarily some kind of magical machine that's going to bend time and change the past and all that fun stuff. It's not that. But in the, in the composing of it and in the building of it and in the reviewing of it, I am resonating with what I am knowing that I'm going to be creating and so on and so forth. We know how, how any of those kind of physical things actually do work. And in this case, it's, it's saying it's not so much about um, I have to work harder and I have to make more things and I have to change. I have to change my luck. It's not that. It's, it's being a little bit more brave and saying, okay, you know, where, where have I not looked where I should be looking? Where can I, it's not gird up the strength to go do the physical things. It's gird up the strength to look at the things that make you feel a little bit anxious, that are making you say, I am an unlucky person. Things never go in my favor. I get really close, but not quite. Oh, it's happening to me again. Like that kind of thing. Strength says, really take a moment to be brave and look at those things that you thought were not in your control that might be, ooh, because this keeps coming back, that whole, well, there's just forces at play. Luck is just forces at play that we don't really have much control over. No, not really. Uh, luck is more, uh, what stuff have you put, what, what things have you thrown in your own way that are keeping you from feeling unlucky, and how are you reviewing these things over and over again, and are you really doing it with a clear and strong conscious? Conscience. That's, yeah, that's it. Conscience. <laughs> 
<laughs> are you being brave and really looking into the mouth of the beast? Or are you just, is it, e- ooh, is it easier for you to just go, well, these are things that are just out of my control. There's just forces that are out of my control. I'm just unlucky, and that's just how it is. I'm somebody that gets taken advantage of, and that's how it is. And if that's what you're repeating over and over again, then that's, I mean, we know from the law of attraction that that's, if that's what you're resonating with, you're just going to see more examples of that. And changing that, changing your luck is going to take more than just going out and, well, maybe if I dump $1,000 into the slot machine. It's, no, no, it's not about that at all. It's about changing, changing that belief system at the base of it. Ah, once again, we're going into belief systems. All right. And the next one is, is a seven of wands. And that's about being defensive and defending. Oh, I'm getting two energies from this. All right, so let's say you've you've defined yourself as unlucky a lot, and you're even looking back in your past and going, "Well, that's I'm every time I review this, I feel like there's things out of my control. I've pissed off a god somewhere. Like it just keeps going out of my control." And uh, Tiny Tarot is saying, "Look at that. Look at that thought process. Review that. Really, truly look at that. See where some of those." things were implanted because just like I said how you can hang out with a lucky person and learn about the way that they think and do things and and you may have had a basis about that the same thing happens with unlucky or man all of this goes kind of to poverty mindset again poverty mindset growing up with that kind of person having those kind of beliefs and then here we go on the seven of wands and defending those beliefs because you have every reason to believe that. You can give me a list of, will this happen? Well, we grew up poor, and then my dad was kind of a jerk, and then he didn't ever want to pay child support, and this and then my mom had to raise us, and then I had, I was out on my own, and I always had, a, oh, and I got married early, we had like 20 kids, and I mean, you know, someone can tell that story of how this is how my life started, and then that's how it continued, and then that's how it is right now, and if that's and, and it feels true, and it feels like you can defend it. And, wow, there's really no reason to defend something that you're trying to change. That's the first thing. You want your luck to go from bad to good? Well, then don't talk about how bad it is. Don't defend why it's bad. And certainly don't pave out into the future that it's going to continue to be bad. This seven of wands is actually the opposite. Let, let's look at it this way. Um, it's going to take some work to change these habits because they will defend themselves. Some of these beliefs and, oh, wow, oh, it, uh, anything that you're really trying to change, man, this can be applied to a lot of things. So luck, yes, but anything that you're trying to change, especially when a habit's really ingrained, it's going to fight back. And that's really what this card is. It's, it's, it's going to take a little more than just you going, I'm just going to look in the mirror every day and go, you're lucky. Everything goes in your favor. Everybody, this three of cups is all you all the time. Lots of stuff I don't understand, but it's all going in my favor. That's great. But if you're not really resonating with that, that's just fluffy words coming out of your mouth that are not doing anything for you. The strength and the seven of wands together says, this is going to take a second this is going to take some effort for you to jump out of that groove that you have built for yourself it's going to take you with this wand to go and like (laughs) what I'm seeing is like the pole vaulter that has to dig that pole in the ground to propel himself out of it honey this is going to take a minute for you to go and really get yourself out of that rut that you are in of saying that same stuff over and over again and thinking even just thinking that having that belief system in place that says well I was born born like into this kind of a feeling and then it's always been that way and it's always going to be that way you got to get out of that and understand it's going to take some work because the belief itself defends itself I don't know how else to word that when you have really ingrained beliefs that you have put into place to help yourself stay safe and feel safe if I tell myself I'm always unlucky if I expect disappointment, then disappointment isn't so painful. Oh, that's an awful, that's an awful little protective thing to put into place. If I just always expect disappointment, then when I am disappointed, it isn't as painful. Ouch, please don't do that to yourself. This is saying you can get out of that rut. It's going to take a bit of work to get out of that rut and understand that those ingrained habits are going to fight back a little bit because it feels so comfortable to stay in that rut. And you don't know what it's like to be the lucky one, to be the one that other people look at and go, how come things are going in your favor all the time? You have to go, well, it it took a little work. And it's not that I'm outside. Obviously, we're taking inspired action when we want to take inspired action. But it's not that I went out and 
you know, just did more or gambled more or just took more crazy chances or anything like that. It's, it's nothing like that. It's just that when I am more aligned with my true, oh, when I am more aligned with my true internal frequency, that's not being cluttered by stupid bullshit, old belief systems, then I'm, I'm really running with less, What's the word, Earl, when you have the other sound that comes in and you're like, I'm getting not stat. It's like static interference. It's interference. like you're running. Yeah. With a lot less interference. It's like your own frequency is able to really be pure and clean. And you don't get that same, you know, like <laughs> I'm seeing football in my head when they're trying to <laughs> when they're trying to score a touchdown and you've got all these <laughs> You know, defensive, just, it feels that way. But when you are running with your true frequency, you're not, it's hard to get that interference. Just think about that. When you are really, really tuned in to a, a radio station and you can do that digitally, you don't get static. You don't get interference. But it also emphasizes getting static and interference isn't necessarily a sign that you're on the right track because th we have that understanding again that when you're moving in and doing new things you're naturally going to get that kind of pushback wow how do you make the difference between the that natural pushback and then the static of i'm not really on the right frequency that's a good one oh okay well the two of wands says you've got to have that intention really really clear Mm, this is about fine tuning. All right, once again, we're coming into fine tuning. <laughs> luck and changing your luck, it's all about fine tuning, guys. Once again, we're coming into like a frequency conversation. So uh, if you're always running the same information in your mind about I am unlucky, or even if, hey, I'm a pretty lucky person, but I would like to, I feel like I'm getting better. I'm starting to level up and I would like to really hone this a little bit better. Um, understand that, first of all, don't look at the world. And the way that the world is acting right now, don't walk into a casino with $500 and say, well, if I don't walk out of here with three grand, then my luck is bad. Because you're walking into an environment there that's been set up, right, to that's not an even exchange kind of a thing. If I'm coming to a person and I'm having a, an exchange, if I'm doing a service and there's a fee, there's an even energy. Oh, I feel like a different lesson is coming in here. Okay. So there's an even energy exchange with a human being like that. But when you're working with a, uh, a casino game, let's just straight up say it. Let's say you're working with a slot machine. There are algorithms in there. It, that is not a regular, I'm putting in this and I'm getting out this. That's not an interaction with a person. That's not an even uh, monetary exchange. It's all meant to vacuum your dollar out of your pocket. So don't look at what's happening to you as in a casino or in any environment that is leveraged against you that way. Don't look at performance there as a, a reflection of your luck because baby that right there there are so many energies at play that you can't see and you don't know that they are already set up for you not to succeed quit play Ooh, tiny tarot says quit playing games that you don't have a chance of winning if you feel like your luck has been bad Baby girl, maybe you're playing the wrong games. Like, don't be setting yourself up for failure and then talk about how bad your luck is. You know, don't make these hasty decisions that feel like you're, oh, I'm taking such a chance. Oh, I don't know. I, haven't, I realize I haven't known him that long and I had such a chance, but I'm going to take this chance. And then later you're all, oh, well, girl, you weren't playing the right game to start with. That's not the way, you know, that you're, you're breaking your own rules. If you're breaking your own rules right out of the gate, then, you know, it, that game's not going to end in your favor. Sometimes luck has a lot to do with, thank you very much, Two of Wands, the choices that you're making. Ah! And that's what he's doing. He's really looking into that crystal ball, man. He wishes that something would just tell him what to do. And that's where we kind of feel like we are at the... Uh, you know, at the, at the, what uh, the, the energy that luck is like, we're just being whipped around by it. And it's not really, okay. So remember when we talked about not necessarily worrying about making a wrong choice, but making a strong choice, luck favors the strong choice. 
But let's talk about why that is. Again, we want to say luck is this magical, you know, universal force. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I get that. But let's break this down a little bit further than that so it doesn't really sound so mysterious. When you make a wishy-washy choice, when you're like, oh, I'm always unlucky, and now I've got this choice of this or this, and I'm not really sure, and I always make the wrong choice, but I don't know. I guess I'll do this. Okay. Now, your next steps along this path that you chose in such a wishy-washy, unsure manner, now every step you take is going to be wishy-washy and unsure because you're going to be like, did I just mess up? Did I mess up? Hey, guys, did I just mess up? I know I'm only on step three, but I really wasn't even sure about step one. Did I mess up? And your filters are going to be tuned to I made the wrong choice. And then how do you defend that? Unlucky when that wasn't the case at all. You just didn't have the spine in that moment to say, all right, well, I'm having, I'm having a little difficulty making a choice here because I feel like there's some unknowns, but I'm going to look at all of the knowns that I have, and I'm going to make the most educated and most sure and most intuitively, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliberately tune into all that. I'm not going to, yes, I'll get opinions, but the biggest thing is what's happening here? And then when I do make the choice, I'm going to make it strong. All right, well, here's what I chose. I chose the path on the right because I feel like it's going to lead X, Y, Z. And even if it doesn't look that great for the first few steps, I'm still going to make strong steps because I'm, I've got the goal in mind. And I, I know I'm going to get backed up for this. So here we go. One, two, three, strong step. Second strong step. Okay, now your filter changes to... This this one knows what she wants, right? My filter, my internal subconscious filter, yeah, we've made some mistakes in the past maybe, but wow, we're working with confidence now. We're moving forward now. This is different. And so your filter starts going to where else am I making good choices? Where else do I feel confident? What else is lighting up for me that can continue this feeling? And that's where we talk about law of attraction. It's, it wants to perpetuate what you're currently in. So your filter adjusts to perpetuate what you're currently in when you do it with strength, when you do it with some confidence, a little muscle, a little work internally. When you say, all right, Psyche, I realize that we've had some shaky moments in the past and maybe we've labeled ourselves as unlucky in the past and maybe we felt like we were kind of at the whim of something that, right, we didn't have control over. But moving forward, <clears throat> we've got the stick in our hand. We are defending our choices because we're making them in a, in a, in a strong, educated, intuitively driven way. Right? We're not making crazy, throw a dart at a board and let chance have, really, let chance have you. Not going to do that anymore. Making strong choices. And when we do that, that's when that energy of now luck is turning in my favor starts clicking for you. And you can call that magic. But what it really is, is you getting a handle on that spotlight, okay? And you are deciding where you're going to go and where you're going to look. And you're not going to worry about all this extraneous, what I could have done, somebody else's opinion on my choice. I'm, nope, I'm moving forward. This is, this is where we're going. We don't worry about it. We don't talk about the job that we could have taken or the time it could have gone that way or blah, blah, blah. Man, if I, had only, if I had just held on to that stock a little bit longer, if I had just bought one more lottery ticket, or if I had just, right, we can't. Resonating with that is, that's a lot of what this is building that structure. It's building a structure that builds our filter that determines how we see the world and determines how we make our choices. So you wanna move towards luckier choices, you want to move towards more opportunity and more luck, make better choices. Like that's a big part of this. Make better choices and make them stronger and clean up the thought process and let go of the anxiety that you might mess up or that you might be unlucky. Be careful, of course. But goodness sakes, if you're paving the way in a nice, strong way, then luck is going to feel like it's rolling in your favor. And it doesn't really, to you at that point, it doesn't feel so magic. Oh, that's what Tiny Tarot's saying. To you at that point, it doesn't feel so much like magic. It feels like, you know, um, maybe I didn't work with computers and then I got good at computers and now I'm good at computers. I didn't know how to speak French, so I took some lessons on learning French and now I know how to speak French. To someone else, that may seem magic. If they haven't seen you in the time that when you started learning French and now you know French, you're like, what? what? are you doing right why are you speaking French all the time that's a weird metaphor but that's what I'm getting at when you're seeing someone that's lucky 
whether they have done work internally or whether they were, quote unquote, lucky enough to get installed with some of that when they were born, because it has a lot to do with the conversations and the experiences that you had when you were younger. And if you were around someone that said, you know, our family's just not lucky. Our f and that happens. Our family's just not lucky. Stuff like this just happens to us. We're just going to be poor and everybody gets sick. And we're going <laughs> to, wow, that's great. <laughs> and if that's something that you grew up with, you've, you do, that's what this says. You've got a little work on that because people around you may defend that. Oh, oh, thanks, Tiny Tara. This is, this is, this sounds kind of painful. You have those people around you that might remind you that you're unlucky. Hey, <laughs> remember the last time that you tried something like this, how that messed up? Remember how you're just kind of the person that this stuff happens to? You know, you always find the worst guy and you always make the, the worst financial decisions. <sighs> Maybe you should just stop trying. Like that, that comes out. People that you, th that say they love you will say these things to you. Why don't you just stop trying? <laughs> Ah, thanks a lot. And that's where this strength comes in. And you say, all right, well, you may have a definition of me in the past. That's great. That's your experience of me. Whoosh, I am way more than your memories of me, first of all. I love that. I am way more than just your memories of me. So give me a minute. And then pull into that strength. What do I need to look at? Where, where is that kind of bullshit that I've been hearing echoing in my own head? Where am I talking to myself like that? Ah, uh, we all have some of that. Let go of it. And then make this nice, strong next choice. Hey, this next phase of my life, not gonna be like this one. Oh, because guess what's next? Thank you so much, Tiny Tarot. It's the Ace of Swords. And that Ace of Swords says it's brand new, baby. It is brand, I almost, okay, I'm not gonna cry. Don't cry. No, because <laughs> I do almost every show. This feels so fresh and so brand new, you guys. This feels like that moment where you really do. You feel as if, yes, now I can look in the mirror and describe myself as a, as a very lucky person, as a person that things go in my favor. Not so much because I feel some magical wind has come in and blown everything that I didn't like away and blown in only good things and made everybody agree with me and someone reached down and decided I was amazing and gave me all their money. It's, it's not like that. It's like, I, oh, wow, I now realize that I have control over this. Luck doesn't happen to me. How am I defining these things? Oh, so how, all right, perfect example, beginning of the show, and Earl can, can totally attest to this. We were like, okay, it's the show, number 13, immediately. Some equipment got left behind. Some other equipment was acting up. I couldn't find the right chargers. This doesn't look right. Maybe we can have somebody bring us something so we can save a little time. Well, yay, now we got that, but now we need this. And that just, and then we were laughing. Well, of course, because it's episode 13, right? I mean, and then I felt like we were almost creating it at this point. Well, you know, expect everything to go wrong because episode 13. 13. Now, we had choices in those moments, all right? Earl and I could have gotten really mad at each other. I could have been like, why would you forget that? And he could have been like, why don't you have one of these? And we could have like totally blown. You know what? Screw it. We're not even going to do a number 13. We'll just skip to 14. Gotten myself all bound up. Oh, of course, this is number 13. You see, it was all in the moment of how I react. But because we kind of expected, hey, this is episode 13 probably going to be some technical issues. I'm going to relax. I'm going to do what I do to relax before the show. I'm going to make sure that I start early. Earl got here early, didn't you? Not even knowing that we were probably going to need some extra time. I we, had everything ready to go. I was uh, like, Man, I didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to relax into, we could have gone more than one way with this. We could have taken unlucky, number 13, screw it, don't even want to do the show, fight, get mad at each other, have him leave. Maybe maybe I'm going to quit doing this podcast. See, that would have been the absolute worst. That's the, that's the dark universe for that, the, dark, the dark dimension that we could have gone down. But no, we had choices in the moment. And we said, okay, you know what? I know I've got what we need. I know somebody can help us. I know this is going to go down. I know that we can give it 
a good go. I know that even if something happens and we roll this back and none of this podcast was even recorded, I'll just do it again. Like it's not, that's the whole difference because inside I'm thinking, because I'm lucky, this stuff goes well for me. I want you to understand that. Now I'm not the person that can walk in the casino and go, I'm going to walk out with 10 grand and make that happen. Maybe that is not set up to go in I've your favor. I've experienced otherwise. Yes. <laughs> All right, I have I have one money before it and it's a lot of fun. And but anyway, <laughs> but I'm just saying I can't expect that. And I can't I can't start judging myself for when I have a negative luck experience in an environment that was not set up for a win-win. Do you see what I mean? If if there's a raffle and they're taking in a thousand tickets and they're giving away one television set. Do you see what I mean? That's not really an even energy exchange. And yeah, we can talk about randomness and luck and all that part of thing. But this this is how do you see your life. So instead of taking one incident, we're talking about incidents across a lifetime. And how do you see yourself as lucky so that you are highlighting the lucky things moving in my favorite experience and where we are here like just like Earl here we are here's the podcast it looks great it sounds good things are going well because we stayed on the path of it's going to work out for us because it always does it's going to go well because it always does we're going to get through these technical issues because we kind of expected them and it's going to be okay and here we are that's my whole point at this ace of swords the swords are these are your thoughts and your words that you say, and this is brand new. This is like a whole new level of, of what do I expect? And what am I building for myself? And what choices are even becoming? See that crystal ball there with this sword? The crystal ball isn't even, he's looking in there because he's just looking at what he wants to do next. It's not tell me what to do anymore. It's like, I got so much. Where am I going? Okay, here's where I'm going because I've got so much much that I want to do. And this Ace of Swords, I can't even, it's, it's inspiration, right? It's fresh new. I want to say it's those choices when your filter is now tuned to that type of confidence that's been fostered through these kind of decisions, okay? And feeling good about the decisions that you've made. And even taking like today, experiences that could be dark and dreary and not the way I want it to go. And I'm just going to curl up back into bed and saying, ah, 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 nah, nah, nah. this is going in my favor. I may not be able to see it right now, but I'm going to keep trugging until this feels the way that I expect it to feel. I am expecting the luck now. That's more than well, I've always been lucky <laughs> or I haven't been lucky in the past. Expecting it brings something completely different to this whole filter that we're rocking. That's all you're seeing now are those really good, right? Those really good light ups for you. Those really good choices for you. And this is just saying it's there. It is right there. <sighs> and it almost feels like I want to say this feels like when you really, really do hit the lottery. This is this is like when you really it's that moment where when you really do let go of something and then it does show up. And I'm going to take the whole casino and all that crap out of it because I really I have to emphasize really true luck. It isn't that it isn't where the deck is stacked against you. OK, I, like the, me taking all of the cards out of the deck except for the ones that I would feel would make you, oh, how awful would that be? Let's say that I wanted to do reads online, but I took every card out of the deck that I thought might might not be good. Nobody wants a tower. Oh, nobody wants to see the devil. We'll just take that out. Nobody wants to see death. Okay, well, how, how accurate of a read are you getting if you've taken half of the deck that you don't like out? Anytime the deck is stacked against you, positively or negatively, don't don't consider luck. Don't reflect luck into that because now you've, right, you've altered the playing field. Ooh. Don't be looking at how your past performance has been in games where the playing field was altered. All right. <laughs> Throw all that out. Luck is that I feel good coming out of this. We got that even back and forth. It went in my favor. Things still went the way I wanted them to in the long run, even though they didn't look like they were going to. That's real luck, baby. It's not scratchers. That's not going in your favor. Don't, don't, 
oh, I just can't emphasize that enough. When we talk about luck, don't be taking these metrics of what we've considered to be luck in the past and call that luck and measure yourself by that because that's not it, baby. There's other stuff at play there. Real luck real luck is making really positive, solid decisions as you move forward, feeling good about them, feeling confident in them, tuning this to say things go in my favor. And then noticing when things are happening that don't feel like they're in your favor, you can still insist, uh -uh, I know where we're going and come out clean in the long run. Come out the lucky one in the long run. Come out the one with a good podcast in the long run. That's exactly where we're at right now. And that's exactly what you can do for yourself. Stop measuring your luck by these weird metrics where the deck has been stacked against you or it was not on an even playing field. Don't call yourself lucky that way or, or unlucky that way. Uh, and, and you know, there are people here, flip it, people that you're calling lucky that have also had some things maybe go in their favor behind the scenes that you didn't, you know, maybe he has a great business because his parents gave him a lot of money at the beginning. He didn't have, he had different things to push against, not the things that you're measuring yourself against. Does that make sense? Because when we, when we look at someone else and start trying to compare our luck to theirs, there's so much at play there. And all you're seeing is a surface level. Do not judge yourself by the surface level vision of anyone else's journey. Because you, everyone's journey is much more convoluted than what you can see, especially if you're looking in a phone. Okay? You cannot get the depth of anyone's life or journey or any of that from that little rectangle that you're holding in your hand. Do not compare yourself to anyone there and say, no, I'm lucky or I'm unlucky because they're like this. It's not like that at all. This is all about how you see it and how you move forward in the world and getting that filter clear and coming to it with the real who you are and then making solid decisions. And then your, you become your own luck. And everything does feel like it's moving. It, it can still feel like magic at that point. Oh, my gosh. It just seems like everything started going really good at that point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely it did. Because you started let going of some bad definitions of luck in the first place. Let going of where you have looked in the past and defined yourself as other than lucky. Doing the work to get yourself out of that. And then feeling it going forward and realizing it. Baby, that was in my control all along oh tiny tarot hey hey that was awesome i really do like that about luck of course it wasn't you know you need to build more altars and polish up some more worry stones no i was like do a little internal work do a little internal work and stop feeling like luck is bad or good is just happening to you out of your control you're setting yourself up for your lucky or unlucky moments tiny tarot says it awesome well thank you so much for being here and thank you earl the podcast master for being here as well i am low-key magical with a k please have a magical rest of your day